You are now tuned in to the Generation Y podcast. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Generation Y Podcast. Uh, do not forget to like, rate, review, subscribe, do all the things so we can be able to get people's stories out more effectively. And today, we have none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Obi, everybody. Make some noise one time for Obi one more time. It's good, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. First and foremost, congrats, man. Congrats on the marriage. It's hey, a big step. Man. Proud of you, man. Thank you, bro. Are you are you married, bro? I'm not, man. I'm not married. I'm just hey. I'm just focusing on what I got. That's going good. On right That's now, good. Man. Well, we're honored, bro, that you came through. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming, and uh, we want to learn everything about Obi. Okay, everybody's excited. They probably seen the ones everywhere. Yes, okay, sir. and so uh, tell us a little bit for one where you're from. We'll go ahead and jump into it. Where you're from and then what you do right now so long story short man uh born in nigeria obi megano born yeah. in nigeria moved to edmond oklahoma when i was young i think i was three yeah you uh, moved by yourself no 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 we moved okay, here the move family okay uh, yeah we, this is a whole thing dad won the lottery lottery ticket yeah i know i know it's crazy for real lottery ticket he moved here by himself moved with his sister a couple months later moved the rest of our family we came here in December, in Oklahoma in December. Yeah. Straight from Nigeria. Never have never have been in never had been in the United States. Right. And, and you go to Oklahoma. <laughs> and it was snowing. <laughs> That's insane. And we get off the plane and we're like, wait, what's going on? What is right. this? You know? And so that's just a little funny story. That's man. wild. Um grew up in Edmond, went to Memorial, you know, played a lot of sports as a kid. Yeah. Um Went to Oral Roberts. Actually, I went to Western Illinois my rookie seat. I say rookie, my freshman year. Yeah. Transferred, wanted to come back home so my parents could, you know, be a part of my life and be a part of my journey. Yeah. And my family. You know, a lot of people that kind of was part of my life as I, as I grew up and kind of took me in, you know, part of their family. Mm. Um, <clears throat> wanted to make sure that they could be there and see me growing up. And so, yeah. and also I miss my family, man. I miss my family, miss my friends. Right. Transfer back to uh, Oral Roberts, uh, played four years there, yeah, and you know had a good had a good good career there. Went on to play professionally, yeah. Uh, this basketball for anybody asking, I know, right, right, right. I, I yeah. know I did like, say, what did he play? Yeah. Basketball for anybody asking. Uh, rookie season in Italy, a little bit in Italy, a little bit in Poland, three years in France, two years in Spain. Mm -hmm. Uh, now I'm here, man. That's insane, bro. That's why. Are you planning on going anywhere else? Yeah, uh, probably go back to Spain here, and hopefully in about in a couple months, dealing with a little bit of injuries right now. So trying to get healthy. We were gonna talk about that, bro. Yeah. We seen you. I've seen you post a lot about it, you yeah, know, and everything. Yeah. So uh, what what happened with the leg? Last game of the season, man. Yeah. Had a great season. Um, a really good season. Last game of the season. I had really. I had signed. All right, so this is games on Saturday. Mm. I signed Friday. This is the last game of the season on Saturday. Okay. I signed not Friday. I signed about Thursday to go finish. We weren't going to make playoffs in Spain. Mm -hmm. I signed to go to Paris to play with um, Metropolitans. It's a, it's a good team in Paris. Yeah. Signed to go play the playoffs with them. Yeah. And so games on Saturday, I'm supposed to leave on Monday. Mm. You know, game on Saturday, last game of the season, travel home. Relax, have a day Sunday to get my stuff together. Yeah. Fly out Monday. That was a plan. <laughs> that was a plan. Yeah. You know, go through the warm ups. I've been dealing with, you know, it's the it's the end of the season. You're dealing with your body's broken down. You know, anybody out there that plays European basketball or sports probably for for that matter, yeah. Your body's broken down at the end of the season. You've been mm -hmm. going two a days for eight, ten months. Insane. Yeah. Uh so you just, you know, you're happy to get to the end of the road. Yeah. And um I'm, you know, first minute of the game, I mean, the score was 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm chasing a screen, mm -hmm. chasing a guy off a screen, and the big man kind of bumps. He kind of moves and bumps me, and I, he just kind of hits me, like hip checks me. Yeah, yeah. And I try to stop, and I plant, and my knee goes in. Mm, ACL, meniscus, and uh, that was the end of it. Dang, then you know the whole rough. the whole journey started all over again. The mental aspect of it really came into effect. Yeah, and uh, it was just like 
road to recovery, right? Right when it happened, that was my goal. That was just my focus was, okay, I've been here before. I tore my yeah. ACL before, my other leg. How long ago was that injury? 10 years ago. I mean, I've had oh, six surgeries, so plenty of surgeries. I've been there. I've done it. You have a, like a bionic leg, Man, bro? I, like, I mean, I'm, I'm almost symmetrical at this point. <laughs> symmetrical. All I need there is one. Go. All I need is a left shoulder surgery, and I'm symmetrical. There you go. There both you go. legs, both knees, Jeez. shoulder. All I need is this one. Jeez. And I'm symmetrical, bro. But uh, I've been through it, man. That's you know? insane. Yeah. So it's, I just kind of, I'm older now. I'm 29, and so it's like, okay, let's get back to what we know. Let's right. get back to our mental aspects, our, you know, the ways to to, our mental health really is yeah, kind of just yeah. tuned in on it. And, uh, you know, now I'm five months, and how's it feeling on, right on now? The rise on the rise. I mean, I feel great. Yeah, I feel great. Um, I'm happy. My agent's happy. He's ready for me right, to go right. back. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy about the progress that I've had. It's and, good. Uh, don't want to rush it, but, you know, or it's, it's, it's Godspeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Man, I, I feel like, I mean, because this is your career, right? Yeah. And, like, going through six surgeries, yeah. I'm sure every time you have, you feel like it's a, like a restart. Yeah. You know? So, like, mentally, and, like, this is a, it seems like, like this is, like, what you're you know, whole thing is about whether it was the brand and mm-hmm. stuff that you post about and talk about on your podcast too. Shout out to your podcast. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so like, what's the, what, what is that whole thing, you know, been, and why did it spark an interest to talk I about mean, like mental health? Because, you know, mental health came along, like I said, I've had a, a lot of surgeries. And mm. so, um, first one was my second year, so I I played at Western Illinois, like I said. Yeah. Transfer, you transfer D one to D one, you got to sit out ninety nine times out of a hundred. Got to sit out. Dang. Sat out, came back, um, was having a great season. Well, I say great season, great start of the season. Three games in, mm. torn ACL. That Dang. was my first like man, wow. And I was I, I was young, man. At that time, I didn't even really think about it. Yeah. All I knew was work, work, work. Right, so right. as soon as I got injured, I'm like, okay, well, now I'm, I'm not practicing on the court. I'm just practicing in the weight room. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in the physio room. I'm doing, I'm in there hour and a half, two hours doing rehab and all this and, you know, ice and stem and all. And it was just, it was still part of the game to me. Mm. It was never like I was removed from the game. It was like, okay, this is just part of the game. This is what I yeah. need to do to get to where I need to go. Mm. Um, so I didn't think about it. And I would have times where I would mentally kind of struggle, but I didn't know I was struggling. Mm. And so, you know, I'd have times where I just I'd be sitting down, man. At the time, I had a girl, a girlfriend, a longtime girlfriend, and I remember, you know, being at her house, and I'd go, we'd be in the in the kitchen, you know, in the in the living room with the family, and mm. I'd go to the room, and I would just break down. I'd just start crying, yeah. and I didn't really know why, bro. I would just be yeah. like. I felt like something was coming over my body and I'd be like, well, what's going on? I didn't know. Mm. 10, 15 minutes, whatever, I go back, have a good time. And, you know, that was that was surgery number one. <clears throat> then as surgeries went on, I started kind of understanding, okay, what do I need to do to make myself feel better, to make myself, to, to get the most out of what's going on mm. and not think of it as an injury, but you know, when you're injured, you're still in the game. So now I'm on the bench and I'm seeing the game from a different side. Mm-hmm. I'm now I'm coaching my teammates and I'm understanding, okay, when I when I come back, I'm not gonna do that yeah. because I know what it looks like. Yeah. You know, whether it's having an attitude or whether it's the the way that we're playing the game or, you know, missing a shot and putting your head down and seeing what it does. And right. so um I just kind of I just kind of learned from that aspect of being out. And then when I came back, now I was like a coach and a player. Mm. And I was only 20 years old. Right. Then getting injured again and going through it again and getting injured again and going through it again. And so mm. I just kept happening. And and during that time, you know, I made, you know, people were like, well, what were you doing? Well, I made different, <laughs> I made changes. I was changing my right, body. Right. I yeah. was going through different diets and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, now I'm plant-based. I've been plant-based for seven years. Mm. And that's something that I found that helps me on the court and in my life. And so yeah. it was all part of the journey, man. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. So... I got to Italy. Fast forward to Italy, rookie season. Yeah. Disaster. I okay. mean, dang. I mean, you know, coming from college where I averaged 24 points a game, I was one of the highest best scorers in the country. I go to Italy, I'm a professional. I'm thinking, man, I'm do the same thing. This is what I know. Right. 
wrong. Wrong again. <laughs> wrong again. You know, yeah, and yeah. I get there and they're like, Obi, do this. Obi, do this. Obi, don't do this. Obi, do this. And I'm like, yo, let me play my game. Right. Let me do what I know how to do. And they're like, yo, you can't just come here and do whatever you want to do. Right. This is not, this is not college anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, you're in a different country, different continent. That's a you, whole new change by itself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so that, that was the first shock for me. Mm. Then the second shock came in where it's like, I'm by myself 24 seven. Mm. And I had one American, one American Damn. on my team. And mind you, man, people think, oh, you're Americans. You guys are best friends. No, they got their own lives to live. <laughs> right, right, you know, right. It's not like right. I'm just, we're just kicking it all day, every right, day. Right. No, like doing they got American their, stuff. Yeah, they got their, <laughs> exactly. That's what people <laughs> right. think. Like you've got friends. No, like they're doing, they're living their life. Right, right. And so you really, I really had to settle in and be like, man, I'm here by myself. What am I going to do? Mm. What am I going to do? What do you do when you can't go outside and talk to anybody? Right. When you can't go to a restaurant and order food? Mm -hmm. When you can't go to a grocery store and buy food because you don't even know what it says? I right, mean, right. the first four years of my career, I'm Asking. Google Translate, oh, yeah, taking yeah. pictures. <laughs> you scrub the thing, the, 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 the description shows up. And you're like, okay, um, <laughs> is that oatmeal? <laughs> No, not that one. It takes a longer time to shop, you know, you huh? Know, oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, and, right. And in Italy, that's cool. You can figure it out. Go yeah. to Poland. Go to Poland where they don't even, the, the letters don't even add up. Right, where, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that was different. But Right, right. So in Italy, I... Is that I, like ski, chicken scratch or something? Like, what is that? I mean, it's like ZZPKW, and, and it says, like, red. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> it says red. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, no, it don't. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? That's hilarious. You know, so, yeah. the, and the people don't think about that, man. Those just That'd be a little super thing. super frustrating. And, man, you come back from a tour day, and I just yeah. want to relax and, you know, go cook, boom. Eat, eat some red oatmeal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right, right, Go right. home and relax. And you yeah. got to, your brain is like constantly working. You don't mm -hmm. get to rest. Yeah. And so that was a shock for me, man. I remember I tell this story. Um, one day I pulled up to practice and you guys know how it is, man. You're dead tired. You're mm -hmm. in the car just listening to music. You got you got somewhere to be, but you're like, let me just get Vibe this last minute. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm in the car and I'm trying to get ready for practice and you know, like I'm, I got my music blaring, yeah, and I'm in the car rapping, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they pull up, <laughs> so you threw on a freestyle or you know, a beat. I, I'm, or in something. There, I'm in there, in my zone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my my coaches pull up, and they start videotaping me, and I'm like, "What are y'all doing?" And I get, I'm like, "What are y'all doing?" And then the next day, the GM comes and said, "Obi, coach said that they saw you smiling in the car." And I'm like, dang, is that what I is that what y'all feel about me? Like that's the first time they see me smile. Like they were making fun of it. Or no, no, no. Like I was having, I was, I was having a good time, and that oh. was the first time that they seen me have a good time. Wow. And I had to look at myself like, is that what I'm putting out to mm. y'all, to everybody, to the, you know, what I'm saying, to the environment? Yeah. Is that the energy that y'all are receiving from me? Mm. And I had to really look at myself like, man. And so I, you know, I was like, man, I, I got to start like being happier like you know mm. they're really big and I, and I come from a real cultural family like eat, the Nigerian culture is very strong yeah and so you know you wake up in the morning and you say good morning to your parents say good morning you know those are there's things that you do and mm. if you don't do that my dad's gonna be on me immediately <laughs> right, right right and that's the same way in Where's Europe good morning? you know what I'm saying <laughs> right, it's the right, same right. way and yeah. but in the states you don't really see that you know kids will walk up and hey mom give me something to eat type, of, type of situation you know what I'm saying say please mom and and that's yeah. the thing is um that you know so they're really big on that as well and yeah. so i had to learn man and and I, I that was my first time getting fired i got released and i i felt like i was doing what i was doing what mm. i was supposed to be doing but i wasn't gotcha and i got cut and that hurt first okay. time getting cut my first job as a professional got mm. cut and so i had to look at life differently mm. after that um it took me some time. I went to Poland. I finished out the season. Uh, you know, I fired my agent at the time. A great dude. Just we we weren't clicking. Right. Got a new agent. And he came and, you know, he, he explained it to me. Like, look, oh, you're not going to make any money this year. You got to start all over. Mm. We're going to send you to France, the second division in France. And um, you've got to, you know, you got to you got to perform. You play well. And after that, you're going to have all the opportunities you want. Mm. And I started off slow. First half of the season, I was averaging like 11 points, not what I was supposed to be doing. And he was like, look, oh, you know, like, 
he was he's just honest like look obi we need you you need to perform like you know you need to perform mm -hmm. something clicked in me man second half of the season averaged like 22 ended up Dang. leading the league in scoring and from that point on i just feel like i figured it out mm -hmm. um let me run back one let me run back half a year to after i left italy yeah, i yeah. went to poland okay and i had a couple i had a big homie shout out mike frazier man he was my big homie, just took me under his wing, and he was just like, man, this is how you move. This is what you do. This is how you train. This is how you eat. This is how you speak to people. And I went to Poland on a, on a place. It was a terrible team, last team in the league. They were about to get relegated. And Mike was the most professional dude I'd ever seen amidst all the BS that was going on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, how do you do it? You know, he's a big vet at this time. He's probably 34. Yeah. Big vet. He's maybe a little bit younger. It's like, man, how do you do it? He's like, man, this is this is this is called being a professional. Yeah. When you because you know, people don't realize in Europe, you'll go months without getting paid. Mm. And even at that, you show up and you shake everybody's hand. Good morning. Right. How are you doing? Right. You go there, you stretch, you lift, you practice hard, you go home, you eat right. Yeah. Whatever's going on outside doesn't matter. This is a business. Mm -hmm. This isn't this isn't college these people don't care about you this is a business yeah treat it as such mm -hmm. and he put me on game man and so i moved forward and i was like man okay i understand mm -hmm. i understand now and ever since then i just feel like i've been getting better and better and better and trying to and now it's like gotten to the point where okay i'm now i'm trying to give it back to the young cats mm -hmm. i'm 29 now. i feel like i'm getting old i'm like man this is now. this is what <laughs> young, you do <laughs> I'm 30, so yeah. yeah, yeah. This is how you. This is what you do. This is how you maneuver. Mm. This is how you handle situations. Yeah, you don't handle situations with emotion. Yeah, not in this business. This is a business. You don't mm. don't treat it like it's like it's backyard basketball. This is a business. You're, yeah. you're getting paid to do this, mm. and it's another level, you know. And so you have to you have to dis distinguish the two, mm. and that's what guys have a hard time, you know, doing. And so yeah. Run it back, man. All that, that's where one by one came in at, man, because I started realizing that the only thing that mattered is what's going on right now. How am I treating my situation, the people around me? What am I focused on right now? Not yeah. the past, not not in the present, right now. You got to take yeah. a step. You know, you focus on your next step. That's good. Yeah. And that's where the one by one came in at, the mental health. Um, I didn't mention this, but I graduated degree in psychology in Oral Roberts. For real, started okay. my yeah. started my master's. Yeah, um, my dad's a therapist, my sister's a therapist, my uncle's a therapist. Every you know, it's in my family. Yeah, and um, that's not really why I got into it, but that was just my path. That's just what I knew. Yeah, and I knew that I wanted at the end of the day, I wanted to be a sports therapist. I want to travel with NBA teams that's fire. and speak to their players mm -hmm. about mindfulness about how to get the most out of your mind you know what i mean um on the court off the court mm. you know and it, it just comes full circle it goes how you treat people yeah it goes how what you put inside your body mm. how are you resting what are you thinking you know there's just so many aspects around it and they all got to come full circle for you to be what you want to be mm -hmm. um so that's kind of just how the brand came in man and and I started to bridge the gap. I wanted to bridge the gap, man. I, all these injuries, you know, one day, a couple years ago, I'm having a great season. We were having a great season, the team. I was in Dijon, France. We were like third in the league, the best season the team's ever had. Yeah. And I was miserable. Really? And I was just like, why? Yeah. You know? And it's because I treated basketball. Basketball was my life at that point. Mm-hmm. I, Obi, was a basketball player. That's that's all I was mm -hmm. at that point. And I was like, man, I, this, is, this isn't my life. My life isn't, I'm a basketball player. Yes, I play basketball, mm -hmm. but I, that's not who I am as a person. Who am I as a person? Yeah. What do I want to do as a person in this life? Mm -hmm. And after that year, that was what, three, three, four years ago? After that year, I realized, okay, what am I going to do when the ball starts, stops, stops bouncing? Mm hmm I was just thinking, like, man, what am I going to do? What have I always wanted to do? Well, I, you know, I kind of want, I want to speak to people. I want to be a therapist. Like, I want to speak to people. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to help people. Okay, so are you going to stop playing basketball one day and just start helping people? No. How are you going to bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm around all these high-level athletes, you know, these role models to some people. Yeah. 
and I want to be a therapist. I want to speak with these, you know, with, with people about mindfulness, things like that. Okay, well, how do I bridge that gap? Well, let me just, let, let's, I want to, let's start a podcast. I want to start therapy sessions mm-hmm. while I'm playing. That's fine. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a hundred miles an hour. Just take a small step. Mm-hmm. And let's just create, let's, let's create this space where we can talk about these things. Yeah. And let me bring in, you know, guys that I know. Cause I, you know, I know a lot of people just from the hoop game, just yeah, from yeah. being around. I know a lot of high level athletes yeah. who would love to share their story. Yeah. So let's create a podcast. Let's get them on there. And let's talk about mental health. Definitely. And then it went into that. And then it was like, man, well, ah, I, I got a bald head. When I went bald, I was like, man, I, I love hats. Mm. Where's the hat that I want to wear? I'm spending $100, $150 on hats. I'm like, wild. let me just create my own. <laughs> right, right. Made my own. Yeah. Then it's just, you know, hoodies. What she, You know, it just started building like that. And so, yeah. you know, it's about a brand. It's about a movement. It's about a community. You see that. You see me use that word everywhere. Um, I'm just trying to create a, a community of of you know mentally aware individuals who mm. are who are able to share their story and come on here and talk about the experiences that they had. Yeah. You know, and not ashamed and afraid to say, man, I was I was in my room crying the other day. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that you, you've done it. You mm. you know, we've all done it. Why yeah, are we definitely. acting like why are we acting like this is not something that humans do? Mm. Let's make it, let's be open about it. Let's it's talk a big, about it's it. a big thing, you know, even even with guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for some reason that's it's something that, you know, I feel like guys have a hard time doing mm-hmm. um, just because of like either how they're raised or, you know, the male figures in their life and everything right. like that. And even like what, you know, men are supposed to be portrayed as, you know, right. even in the media and stuff like that. So um, and I think like I think it's kind of changing a little bit, especially since mental health is becoming a little bit more of a topic and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's dope, man. I love I love what you're, you're talking about because, yeah. you know, the the high-end professional athletes probably go through a lot more than what people think. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, like, people don't think about, you know, athletes like y'all going overseas not knowing anything or anybody. And and that's the thing is people look at me and they're like, man, you're making all this money. Mm. What issues do you have? (laughs) Right, right, right. Like, man, if you only knew. Right. If you only knew what it took to to just get there. Right. You know, I know, I I knew a guy who went overseas... I, I, this, I don't know what day he flew over on. It could have been a, a Monday. Mm. Flew over on Monday and flew back on Monday. He that same couldn't Monday? Do couldn't do it. Same Monday. Couldn't oh, do wow. it. wow. He got there because you'll get there and you'll go straight to practice. Mm. I mean, I mean, land. Now I'm a vet and I, I don't have to do that. But as a young cat, mm. you land. Oh, you'll have practice that night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might land at 11 and have practice at 2.30. Mm-hmm. And you got to go there, and they're not expecting you to practice 100 miles an hour, but you you change up, you put your clothes on, you get out there, run a couple drills, things like that. You get acclimated immediately. Mm, right. Especially if you show up in the middle of the season. Right. And so, um, you know, a lot of guys, they, 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 they think they want that life, and they get there, and they're like, man, this is not for me. Mm. You know, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. So, um, I, I'm, I mean, I commend anybody who's – you know, able to go over there and just and be there and 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 take that that leap into yeah. that lifestyle because uh, it's not all glamorous like it looks like, man. Mm-hmm. It's not like I said, man. This is my first time in eight years in the United States. That's a, in October. Insane. Yeah, or in October. I haven't. I haven't had. I haven't had. Uh, thanks. I haven't had Halloween. I haven't had Thanksgiving. Haven't had Christmas, New Year's, and eight Valentine's, years. Easter, Dang. Uh, spring break. I mean, eight years. I haven't right. had. I haven't been to anything. That's insane. I went to my first wedding ever last year. For real? Ever? 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 In your life? In life? Ever? Twenty nine years. Last year. That's insane. Basketball. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Basketball throughout. Christmas throughout the year in college. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't just get up and go um eight years professional. You really can't I mean, that's so my brother's th- my brother's wedding was two years ago. Couldn't go. So do you feel like you're kinda like picking up where you left off trying to build those relationships back? For sure, man. Like it's crazy because anybody that's been around me in the last six months, mm. 
the only thing I've been talking about is crazy, man, is the weather. <laughs> For real? Y'all don't understand. Like, we, I go to practice yeah. and I come home. And then go back to practice yeah. and come home. So you're inside all the time. You know, inside. And people don't understand, man. You go to Europe and from August, August, September, until the beginning of October, mm-hmm. it's burning hot outside. Really? Okay. There's no AC. Oh, uh, okay. You know, in Europe, you don't have it. My my place last year had I AC. Think it would be burning hot, though. That's oh, wild. My, la- my place last year in, in Madrid. Mm-hmm. First place I had that had AC. And they don't need it because it's not hot Mm, that often. Right. Two months out of the year, it's hot. They don't need it. Mm. But those first two months you get there is the the peak of the 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 the, the heat. Right. And so uh it's it's so coming here you like it or no? No, I mean I enjoy it. Like I said, I, I spent the last four years, probably I've spent my summer, and I say summers. I mean, I say, when I say summers, I mean like three weeks. Mm. I've spent my summer in California. Of course, I love it. Right, right. The right. weather there is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, but as being home and just being outside, <laughs> y'all gonna think I'm crazy. I was laying in my front yard the other day, bro. No. And my neighbor, I'm laying like this. Oh. <laughs> it's it's probably like nine thirty. I'm laying like this at my, night. No, in the morning. Oh, okay. On gotcha, my, gotcha. On my, oh, I I'm mean, like, I guess either way. It's I'm kinda... laying like this on my yeah. front lawn. My my neighbor comes out. He says, "Obi, <laughs> are you okay?" <laughs> right, I right. Got him. I'm like, yo, I'm good. I'm just enjoying the weather, man. It's I'm like good. when you see a dog laying down, you think it's dead. It's like, yeah. you good? No. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, no, I'm good. I'm just enjoying <laughs> yeah. the weather. But that's, that's just how I feel, man. That's I just amazing. feel like it's if. To be outside and be yeah. in the environment and be able to touch people That's and speak dope. and and don't get me wrong, man, because the truth is, is I'm I, I, I might like Europe more than the states, to be mm. honest with you. But in what this, aspect? Europe is just a simple life, man. Mm. I mean, go outside, you won't see a soul walking. You won't see one soul outside walking. Right. You go outside in Europe, mm. anywhere you go, you can't get away from people. Right. I mean, people walk everywhere. I go to the grocery. Almost every day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it has to do with things going bad and things like that. But like the life is so simple, man. And yeah. I enjoy it. Mm. People minding their own business, just doing what, you know, I'll get up, walk to the little coffee yeah. shop, sit down, get a coffee, go about my way. Yeah. You know, and, and it's simple and it's enjoyable in that life. But I haven't not had basketball on me in so long mm. where I can just relax. Yeah, yeah. You know, relax. And, and it, 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 it poses other issues, of course, mm. but it's just something I haven't had, and so I'm enjoying it while it's here. Yeah, you know, and and I and I want to go back, and I'm gearing up for, for going back, and I'm excited about it. But part of me loves doing what I'm doing right here. Yeah, you know? that's dope. That's dope, man. You you seem like I mean I haven't seen you, you know, during you know oh, your basketball time, obviously. Yeah. Apparently, a whole lot of people have it, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like it seemed like you you're pretty positive. Like you, yeah. you breathe life. Yeah, 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 yeah like, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, so it's dope to meet you, bro. And even somebody that's got a platform for you know being able to speak to, because you, I mean, you were talking about you know being able to speak into your athlete, um, you know, partners and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like being able to impart the same energy that you bring. Yeah. You know that they may not have. I mean, it, you could go into like speaking and motivating, you know, a bunch of people that have nothing to do with your job right right, right. or your your um or basketball and it'll be motivating cool right, right? and then who knows what, who, what they're gonna do you know with it but like going to the people that you work with every day and then you know what they go through they know what you went through all that kind of thing it's like they would have a mutual respect plus their platform is the, about the same as yours right yeah, yeah so yeah. they're gonna be impacting masses too right you and know and and to piggyback off that, man, you'd be surprised how many people just want you to ask them, hey, man, how you doing? What's going on? Bro, for real. You'd yeah. be surprised. Like, hey, are you good? Mm-hmm. Like, what, what'd you do today? Yeah. What are you doing today? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You would be surprised yeah. what doors that opens. Yeah. And so for me to reach out to somebody and be like, hey, man, uh, you know, I've got this podcast. Like, I would love for you to come on, share your experience, share your story. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. And they get on there and they're just like, man, this is going on. This is what's going on. You know, and yeah, it's just a, it's a good, genuine conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've built a lot of relationships. Obviously, I've got a, re- a lot of relationships through Hoop. Mm. 
this has enhanced those same relationships and brought more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. There's a lot of guys that I've known for a long time that I haven't been able to sit down and have a serious, genuine conversation with. Yeah. We just, you know what I mean, talking about nonsense. But right. it's a lot of people that I've connected with here that are just like on the same path, on the same journey. Yeah. Would love to share what they went through to help the next person. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's a different type of awareness. And I feel like a lot of people don't have that, you mm -hmm. know, and like what you're talking about, having that you you want to be able to help create mentally healthy and more aware people. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's the same thing, you know, we're, we're all about too. Cause it's like, if you can, it's, it's cool being able to just live life. Right. And maybe being somewhat aware about, you know, the things that are next to you or whatever going on, but there's something about you being able to genuinely connect with somebody yeah. and then them not know how, you knew what they're going through yeah. just by like looking at them. Right. Yeah. And you being able to point that out is a different type of awareness that you're tapped into that, uh, most people don't have, bro. So and, that's dope. And at the end of the day, man, this is a, two things. One, the, the overseas and not just overseas, the NBA too, you know, cause we've had league guys on there too. The NBA, the, the basketball world is so small. Mm. It is so small, man. Mm. And, you can reach, I mean, I can almost reach anybody in this world, in mm -hmm. this basketball world, especially, right, right. you know, yeah. and uh, they, they have their following and they're, you know, they are impacting people in different ways, man. It's just, I don't know, man. It's to me, it's a beautiful thing to, mm -hmm. to be able to just reach so many people and have these conversations because at the end of the day, when I come in and I, I don't know how many no's I've gotten. It can't be more than two or three because who doesn't want to come on here and share? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Talk about themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who yeah, doesn't yeah. want to right, come right. on here and talk about themselves? <laughs> right. And a lot of these, a lot of athletes feel like, man, I went through something that nobody else went through. Well, the truth is probably a lot of people went through right, the same thing. Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm. And, um, you know, you're just, you're, you're speaking to the next guy who's going to go through it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so. Definitely. Yeah, man. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing because like, whenever you're talking to somebody, they always feel like they're the only ones that's ever, ever gone through yeah. it and they felt alone. Right. Exactly. And even if you say, okay, well, let's say I went through the same thing. They would feel, you know, in a sense that like, Hmm, I wonder if mine was l legit or not, yeah. you know what I'm yes, saying? Or feel yes. validated in their pain, you know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. And so like, I think, I think it's great for people to, you know, being able to talk about their stories, talk about their, their thoughts, even their thoughts, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Their feelings and stuff like that. Because like, I mean, where, where do we connect at one point? You know what I'm saying? How yeah. can we all really realize that we're all one? Mm -hmm. Oh, whoa. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, I see. Do you, you feel what I'm saying though? Whoa. <laughs> what a twist, huh? What a twist. What? Whoa. Come hey, on, boy. Come on, man. Wow, wow. Come on. That's what's up. You know, and it's funny, man. People ask me, what does the one mean? Yeah. And I tell them, like, man, the one is just it's just a symbol for yourself. It's mm. you. It's literally you. You're you are the one. You your life, it, it's like I can't I can't explain to people yeah. that that it's going to go wherever you go. Mm. Right. So wherever you want your life to go, man, you, you got to put yourself in the center of your life because mm. you cannot pour into other people from an empty cup. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. So I, I'm the most respectable person, mm. but I will tell you no in an instant, mm. quickly tell you no. And that doesn't make me rude. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you, no, if, if it compromises me, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because how many of those how many of those instances can I have? Mm -hmm. You might ask me to compromise for you, then he asked compromise, and he asked, and then everybody, then I'm compromising for everybody. I'm spread spread thin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then what can I give to you know? Like it's, and so that that the one is just man, it, it's a reminder to take care of yourself first. Mm. And that's not selfish. It's not at all. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's a balance. Depends on who you ask, but but that's the thing, like. Yeah. You know, my that's how my friends know me, man. I'm I'm very respectful. I'm very kind, but I don't. I, I, I'm not, and I will go out of my way. I will gladly go out of my way if if it's not compromising myself. Right, I will right. give out of myself as much as I can give. Yeah, yeah. But don't ask me to compromise me. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. ask me to 
you know, like it's, it's, I just try to, I try to make sure that people understand that, that, mm. you know, people get pulled and get pushed and get put, no, you got to stand on your own too, man, and make decisions mm. for yourself. That's huge. First. When, when was a, a realization that you needed to start saying no? Um, cause I feel like there's a hard thing for people it's to do, hard, man. especially with a, a kind person. Yeah. It's hard. Be, and, well, it's when I realized that the, the, the takers, they don't have a limit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They, Give them an inch, they, you can take them out. They'll yeah. take it, and 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 that's not their fault. It's your fault for allowing them to do that, for enabling them, for enabling. Right. So so when I I be when I went back home, I went back home for the first time back to home, Nigeria, mm. for the first time maybe six years ago. And you've got people that literally have nothing. Right. I mean, when the pandemic hit, we've got maids back home and. We can't even contact them because they can't charge their phone because they don't have gas for the generator to charge their phone. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's, let's not talk about food. Mm. They can't even, they their house isn't running. Wow. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. nothing going on at home because they don't have any money to start the house, to start mm. the generator, to start anything, the lights, the, you know what I'm saying? Talk right. less of food, tomatoes, rice, all that stuff. So, mm. you know, and when you go home, they will take everything from you right everything literally they anything that you have on your person they'll take it if you give it to them they'll take it mm. you know what i mean and that's not i i'm not saying anything about you because you don't have anything you mm. know what i'm saying like right rightfully so but i can't give you everything right you know what i mean like you'd down be, to you'd be their only source and and i can't give you everything because i can't you know like and that's what I talk about, you know, compromising myself. Like, okay, yeah, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. And they'll keep asking and asking and asking. Oh, and then they'll get mad at you for not giving them. Mm. Oh, well, you're not. Well, I don't have anything to give you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I've got to feed myself as well. Mm -hmm. You're going to take, you know, like, and and there's a line between, there's a line. There's a fine line, man. But that, that kind of goes into the play of it. It's like, yeah. I don't want to get too down a rabbit hole, but. That kind of hey bro, that's what this is for. That, yeah, that kind of gets into it. It's like, yeah. man, you can't. I can't give you everything. That's mm. just you know. So I got to take care of me, and then when I get enough, then boom, I break you, I break you, I break you. But yeah, yeah. I, now I'm controlling. I'm controlling my circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting y'all dictate my life and where things go in my life. And that's yeah. what a lot of people will do. They'll take. They'll let other people dictate them mm -hmm. what they're doing. Peer pressure. Mm -hmm. I've never been one for it. Yeah, never. I mean, never. As long as I can remember, like I've yeah. never been one for peer pressure because it's not what I want to do. I'm yeah. letting you tell me what to do, mm -hmm. you know. And so it goes back to the one man. It goes back to the brand. Um, being able to to just make your own, make your decisions, make your own decisions, you mm -hmm. know, and and decisions that you agree with, and doing what you agree with. And and if you don't, if you want to say no, then say no, mm -hmm. and don't don't give an explanation because no doesn't need an explanation. Mm -hmm. It's real. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't need an explanation because I didn't yeah. want to. That's that's good enough. Because <laughs> I don't want to. That's good enough. It's yeah, my yeah. life. I don't want to. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. people think, oh, well, you're rude for that. No, I'm not rude for that. Mm. I'm not. Yeah. You know, so. Because everybody expects stuff. Like when, when they think that somebody's got something and they know that they should or they think that they should give it. Then they expect it from them every time. I mean, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll get into a topic that you know. Let's talk about. Let's talk about and and luckily I haven't dealt with this much in my life, but I know a lot of people who do deal with it. Let's talk about you know athletes making money, mm. and everybody coming for the money, mm. and expecting you to take care of them. Yeah, yeah. That's and it's true. like, oh well, we're we're your family. Why are you not taking care of us? Well, right. at what point do I get to take care of myself? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I sacrificed. I missed all these years of my life to be able to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And now you want it and he wants it and he wants it. And, he, and who do I say no to? Right. Who do I say no to? I think that they probably think that they expect to have something to where it's like y'all all even. <laughs> you and, know what I'm saying? And it's everybody like, expects you to do something. But at what point? And, and I'm sure you guys have dealt with it like... Mm. Hey, bro, can I get a discount? Can I get a hat for free? Okay, mm. well, if I give you one, then I got to give him one. Right. Then I got to give him one. Then mm. at what point does it stop? Yeah, definitely. Where, where does it stop at? That's real. You know, and so I nip it in the bud early. Yeah. Early. Mm. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I, I, 
We do assembly sometimes. Mm-hmm. I do give kids some hats for free. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but <laughs> no, for sure. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I give people stuff for free too. <laughs> right, but right, it's because right. I want to. Right, right, right. Because mm, you want. You know to. what I'm saying? Because I want to. Yeah, yeah. You know, and if you come to me and say, "Can I?" and I say no, then we we walk away, and it's, that's business. I'm not mad at you. You're not yeah, mad at yeah. me. Shouldn't be mad. Shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I treat it. Like you came and you asked, and I said no. Right. I'm not mad at you for asking. Don't it's, be mad at me. For, I feel like there's a, there's a big culture of like they people are upset about people saying no. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, you know, because people uh, don't like to feel rejected. But a conscious you know what I'm a conscious person wouldn't get upset about that. Mm, there it is. A conscious person wouldn't yeah. get upset about that because you asked me to get so now bring a thousand people right here and then mm. let 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 them all ask and I'm supposed to give everybody one right. No, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work like that. And so yeah, yeah. a lot of athletes will get into that mode of, and and I'll be honest with you, man. Like I said, living a simple lifestyle overseas, you don't spend any money. Mm-hmm. Spend money on food. You're not doing, just being here in yeah. the States, you spend so much more money. Mm, that's I mean, that's just real. being here. It, it, there's so much more money that goes out, things that you would just would never realize or don't even think about. But, mm. um, you know, a lot of athletes go through where they're expected to take care of their families. Mm-hmm. And once again, there's, there's a limit. Yeah. And the limit is where you draw that line. I would say my parents, that's about it. You know, but that's your line. <laughs> Sorry you know about the rest of you. Yeah. But my dad, Maybe is the, my grandma, my, my dad's whatever. the oldest of 10. Jeez. So where does that line stop? But that's not your dad. So, no, I'm, or, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm saying for him. So let's talk about him. You know, you say for family. Right, right, right. I would say the same thing for family. Right. Well, some people's family is bigger than other families. Mm. So your family might be two or might be four or might be three. Mm. His family might be 15. Does the same rules apply? I guess that's his boundary, whatever he exactly. wants to do. Yeah. It's on him. It's mm. on him to make that decision. I can't right. tell you. You can't tell me. It's on you to make that decision. Bro, you you kind of lucked out, bro. You got some you got like counselors as parents. That's yeah, dope. Yeah. What was that like growing up? Like I, I mean Did my, they make you talk out a lot of you know, like your your problems growing up and stuff? Uh no, cuz at the end of the day they're <laughs> Nigerian. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, they are very strict. Mm. I, I say strict. They strict, like traditional yeah, types of traditional. Yeah, yeah. I mm. mean Core beliefs, just yeah. extremely strong respect. Yeah, yeah. Th- you know things like that. Uh, being kind to people. You know those That's things. Dope. Those <laughs> things are just they're not. We need more parents like that. Non negotiable. I mean, my yeah. parents are the goats. I mean, yeah, non negotiable. They, you know, they and they, they created a goat. I mean, my guy. You know, yes, sir. you know what I'm saying. Yes, they sir. put me on yes, a. Sir. They put me on a level that, yeah. you know, I expect certain things from people, mm-hmm. and. Not that I expect you to do it, but I, I, that's that is my that's my baseline. It's just a standard. Yeah, it's my yeah, baseline. Yeah. It's like you know, and and part of my growth is like I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm going to help you, teach you. Like, okay, mm. well, say good morning next time I see you. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Did I say good morning? Say thank you next time I hand you something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think if I said good morning to you say earlier. Say please. And I, yeah, we say greet we each did. other. Yeah, yeah, and it's not, did, it's not okay. about good morning. It's like, hey, dad, how you doing? Oh, yeah, or, yeah. hey, dad. Hey, acknowledging somebody. Yeah, like, hey, yeah, yeah. don't walk in like you just owned it. No, like, <laughs> right. you, you live under my roof. You better say something when you walk in here. <laughs> you better say something. You know what I'm saying? You don't like the way I talk. Yeah. You say something. Yeah. yeah. Like, and those are things that are just yeah. not negotiable. Like, let me walk in and not say Facts. nothing to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> what right and, and so you know and, and 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 i've also had big homies man who have who have kind of instilled that in me mm. like greets like hello how are you doing today like yeah. make people feel right. welcome yeah, how are you yeah. doing today man good Definitely. to see you you know yeah. make people feel welcome and mm. you know people nowadays are so cool they walk around with their head down and what's up what's up how you doing Put a yeah, yeah. On. like we're happy to be here we're blessed to be here definitely definitely you know what i mean like that's real man i mean i i, I can't tell you how many schools we go to bro and you just see you see a self-inflicted oppression mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like i know you have a good mom and dad yeah i know that your you know life is not that crazy yeah and there's other people who have crazy lives and they're right. happy Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and why is that? And that's what I say about simple life. Mm. So when I, 
when I go back to Nigeria, you really about the simple life. When huh? I go back to Nigeria, bro, mm. I mean, ain't no running water in our house, right? People talking about, oh, I grew up poor. No, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> right. If I go home right now to the village, there's 15 kids in that front yard, and none of them got clothes, shoes, nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They might have a t-shirt on. Mm. Running around with no shoes on, no food. I show up with a pack of Ritz crackers and hand each of them one. Like you just handing them $50. Crazy. But they're the happiest kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I enjoy going back there, man. It's such a simple life. Yeah. Go to Europe. Same way in Europe. But obviously, it's, it's a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. But it's it, as far as simplicity goes, it's kind of the same way. It's like a simple life, man. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's so happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They work their tails off. And then when they're resting, they take off two weeks or take off however long. Yeah. And they're enjoying their lives. Yeah. You know, here, America's American dream. Everybody's miserable. What kind of dream is that? Mm. You know what I'm saying? What kind of dream is that? Uh, and I'm not here to talk bad about America because I love being here. But right, at the same right. time, we've got to change as a community. We've got to change the way that we're viewing things and the way we're seeing things. Perspective. And, yeah, yeah we got to change our perspective. Let's For not real. think it's it's not cool to be that way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mental mental health awareness is cool. That's what's cool. Yeah. Definitely. It's cool for me to understand that you're going through something and be like, hey, man, hey, let's, you know, you want to yeah. talk about it? You want to go somewhere? Let's get something to eat. Let's. Yeah. That's cool. Not, hey, man, get over it. Dudes don't cry. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. Right. And that's what we've got to change in this society, in this community is that behavior. And people don't people don't take time to. I mean, you're talking about, you know, a simple life, but I feel like we could have it more simple here. If one, we didn't fall into the distractions, mm -hmm. the negativity, and then also like we just need to learn how to take time to slow down. Yeah. You know, not only just like our life, but like our brain, mm -hmm. our body, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because like I'll tell you one like my mind is going 90 miles an hour all the time. I have a hard time sleeping too. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And yeah. so just because I'm thinking of ideas and right. stuff that I didn't do or whatever um and just organization and all that kind of stuff but it's like if if we could just learn how to take time to slow down mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying breathe like that's actually like a you have to some people in america Stay. take classes that's to the, learn to breathe that's the most simplest thing in the uh, world that we have made so difficult, difficult bro. <laughs> yes yes my dad somebody asked me oh nice shout out night d night that's where i work out in the morning it's been yeah. a great dude uh I was having a conversation with him just this morning, 6 a.m. Yeah. And he was like, we were talking about NBA basketball. You watched the game last night? And I was like, I don't really watch NBA basketball anymore. Like, I've been in Europe. The time the game comes on at 3, 4 a.m. He's like, you don't get mm. up and watch it? I said, no, I don't get up to watch it. <laughs> because I don't, I don't let nothing come between my sleep, or I yeah. don't, because I understand how imperative that is for my yeah. body to function how I want it to function. Yeah, yeah. I grade my sleep. How many times did I get up during the night? For real. How many times did I get up to pee during the night? Did I sleep all... I grade my sleep. Every day I wake up, I'm like, man, how did I sleep? Mm. I'm like, did I wake up? I'm like, I did wake up. Okay, what do I need to do to not wake up tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Like, that's 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 my first thought when I wake up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not... I don't play... I'm not messing around with my sleep, man, because it, it's imperative to our bodies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Definitely. so... We we definitely overcomplicate stuff over here. I feel you know like. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and all it takes is somebody to kind of put that in you and like that bug in your ear mm. to for you to understand, okay, well, maybe I need to like focus on what I'm on my sleep and focus on how to slow down and things mm. like that, you know? Because yeah. it's huge. Like you said, man, I don't sleep. I'm always racing. Like, you know, my mind is racing all the time. But I, you know, and if I'm having trouble sleeping, I know ways to help myself sleep. You get what I'm saying? Bre mm. Breaths to take and things to do right before I sleep. Yeah, yeah. To help me sleep. Yeah. And that's part of the mental health journey too. That's Definitely. part of that. That right there for athletes is so important. Oh, for sure. I and bet. that's one thing that I've learned that I would like to teach to the, to the to my fellow athletes or coming up athletes or anybody you know mm. who needs help sleeping. Like, there's things that you could do to improve your sleep. Yeah. And you want better sleep, so let's talk about it. For sure. You know? Yeah. Definitely, you know. So hit OB up for that and sleep. You know methods. what I'm saying? Let's talk about <laughs> yeah. sleep. I won't that's be sleeping fire. with you, but let's talk hey, about it. Sleeping on you either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. That's dope, bro. Um, man, I was gonna even there was a thought whenever we were talking about the mental health thing. Uh oh, because like we have a phrase called you know, and we said it since the beginning of Gen Y. Um, but it's like free people, free people. 
So mm. it's like we we talk about you know Generation Y and W H Y is like we want to create a generation with a Y, a purpose, you know, mm-hmm. all that. And so like whenever you are able to understand what your purpose is and your why, that's like the foundation for your future. And so like once you're able to catch that and grasp that, you start to become free, right? Yeah. And then once it, once you realize that you have that freedom, and then you're able to propel from there. It's like now it's your turn to take your purpose, your passion, your why to start freeing other people. There you go. You know, instead of hurting people, hurt people. Forget that cycle. You know what I'm saying? Start freeing other people. You know what I'm saying? Break the other cycle for everybody else that's walking down with their head down. You know what I'm saying? Talking all negative about their own life and their family, friends, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's a perspective change and it starts with you understanding that you've got a purpose. And yeah. yeah. And, and, and let me say this, man. One thing that I I forgot who said this to me, man, but he said, instead of asking people, what's, what's up, Mm. ask him what's on your mind Mm -hmm. and see the response that they give you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because catch them off guard real quick. (laughs) And they'll, and they'll, that's more inviting and they'll, they'll feel like, okay, this guy really cares about what's going on. Mm. You know, don't, don't just ask it to ask it. Don't like, you know what I'm saying? Get into that mode of where we're trying to help people, man. We're trying to, because there was a time when I needed help and people came and helped me. Mm -hmm. And that's my goal, man. I I want to, I'm trying to pay back. I would never ask you to do something I wouldn't do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, And I'm trying to get, I would like for somebody to do me the same way that I did, or I would like to do to somebody the same way that they did to me yeah, yeah. when I needed help. Definitely. You know, so yeah. uh, just be inviting, man. Be yeah. inviting. It's important. It, it's very important. Some people, I, I've been, we've been talking about uh, creating a self, safe environment okay. too within our group uh, or our team and everything. Because like for somebody to feel like they can like, feel comfortable enough to talk to you about their mm-hmm. feelings and emotions and all that, they have to feel safe. For right. Sure. And so like for you to be able to create that, like I feel like already you're creating a type of brand that's already inviting. Yeah. You know for what I'm sure. saying? And so like, that's why I think I connected it. Cause I saw you were uh, the hat at, uh, at OAC one time. And there was somebody in the locker room. They were just wearing the one hat. I was like, what is that? I've seen that somewhere. <laughs> and then I started getting mad at myself because I'm like, I should know this. <laughs> you know, and then um, I'm talking to my my best friend, Stuart. And he's like, I think uh, something to do with basketball. Something to do. So we're just bouncing back and forth. <laughs> and it, we're like, you know, trying to figure it out. We actually, we look it up and find out it's you. Yeah. And then that's when I followed you. And then I reached out. And then... And then that was what was crazy. Our, a mutual friend of ours, yeah, you know, connected, and then they're like, "Y'all should know, y'all should know each other and doing the same type of thing or whatever." Yeah. And I was like, "Shut up," you yeah. know. So th- there's something, man. Whenever you know, positivity breeds positivity, and then and they come together. You know what I'm saying? I think it's it's impactful, bro. And yeah, man, it's it's the way that happened was crazy, mm-hmm. and. Um, Cause you were doing like some real or, or real estate, looking at a yeah, building just, or something. Yeah, but just bought that property. Um, That's wild. So yeah. you investing in real estate too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in real estate for some. Bought my first one. Uh, what a twenty-two. I think I bought my first property in nineteen, twenty nineteen. Really? Yeah. How old were you then? Twenty nineteen. What is this? Twenty-two. I was three years younger. Twenty-six. That's crazy. Yeah, bought my first one. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, I was been trying to stack ever since, man. Yeah, stacking. That's so, hard. I mean, and and it, once again, man, it's this this game won't last forever. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's a beautiful thing while it is lasting. But for all of you athletes out there, man, find something that you enjoy. Yeah, find something that real. you you know, and and even if you know, you can't be afraid to take a wrong. There are, there are no wrong steps. Mm. You know, you can't be afraid to make a mistake because you're learning. That's yeah, part yeah. of it. You know, you should be, you should be, you should be reaching for, you should be reaching and hoping to make a mistake because that means you're pushing boundaries. Mm-hmm. You know, I, we always talk about for all those basketball players out there. You know, ball handling. You doing ball handling for the first ten minutes of your or your workout. You want the ball to be bouncing everywhere. Mm-hmm. Not everywhere, but you want to make sure that you're challenging your handles every time. You if you if you're dribbling the ball if you're doing two ball handling and you're comfortable the whole time you're not challenging yourself mm-hmm. yeah you should be bouncing the ball should be ah you know you get mad you're like okay how do I fix it you know and that's part of life bro like yeah, yeah. you should be pushing and making and you know make a mistake 
mm-hmm. correct it, keep going forward. Like that's how you push in these limits. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know, because you figure out how to control your mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's it's just like that in life, man. You got to find ways to challenge yourself constantly. Yeah. Um, and then put yourself in a community with people who are also challenging themselves. And yeah. You know, y'all go find somebody to, you know, find a place to be impactful and, and, that's and fire. you know, help help the community, man. Yeah, that's dope. Bro, Obi, it's dope to meet you, man. man. Hey, it's been a pleasure, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, for, I, I apologize, bro. Listen, I know anybody would say this, but I'm I'm normally not that bad at texting, bro. <laughs> I know that's I know that's the line that You're most people would life, say. Bro. That's the line that most <laughs> no people play. would say, and I do do that, bro. But sometimes I'm like, man, I just don't have the energy right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And that's no, part of good. me taking care of me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just like, and I told you, I was like, bro, I need to hit you back in a couple of days. I'm flustered right now. I got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me just calm down first, and we'll, yeah. we'll tap back in. But once again, man, there was a time where I would have just. Try to juggle them all. You can't, yeah, you know, yeah. you can't do that. I, it was a time I would try to juggle them all. I would have dropped something. Mm. But uh, when you take a second and slow down and say, okay, let me just, let me just take a step back. Mm. I'm going to hit you in a minute. Let me get my ducks in a row, mm. you know, and then let's come back and reconvene. And so mm. uh, that's, that, that was just another, that's another step in my journey, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Man, I was, see, this is why my brand, my, I'm, and a creative i'm always you know yeah thinking of stuff but like so whenever you talk about that i got a visual right of the one yeah all right so you start out every morning with the one right mm-hmm. then too many people start hitting you up you start becoming a two three four five it's like you know what i'm saying mm. but to realign yourself you got to come back to the one you got to come back to the one that's crazy you got to you 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 have to know where home is man you've got to I can't stress it enough, man. You are, it's your life. Mm. You, you've got to live your life under your rules. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't mean you don't take influences from other people. No, because mm. that would just be ignorant, right? Yeah. But you have to choose where you're, and, and my dad was always big on that. He was always big on not going with the crowd. Mm-hmm. He was always big on that. Yeah. And he, it wasn't like, oh, if your friend jumps off a cliff or you want to jump <laughs> off. You right, know, he, right. didn't, he didn't hit me with that one, right, but he right, was right. just like, if you don't follow what people are doing unless that's something you want to do, mm-hmm. then you go, you know what I'm saying? But you go because you wanted to do that, not yeah, because yeah. they told you to do that. Right. And there's, and what your mind does when you distinguish the two is huge. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I always do, I, I'm big on this. I ask people, well, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if if we ever come to a crossroad and we're trying to decide, what do you want to do? Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm gonna do what you want to do, but that means you you need to let us let it be known that you have a stance. Yeah, yeah. This is what I want to do. Okay, well, this is what I want to do. Okay, let's meet. Mm-hmm. You know, not oh well, let's just let's just do whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you gotta have a, you know. That's where we miss the common ground in things. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. see we see start seeing differences, then we start dividing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so like once we like just like you're saying, it's like, I mean, you got your thing, I got my thing or whatever. As long there's some commonality between the yeah. two. And we if we can find that, we can still be moving for at the both same of us. spot. Find a place that works for both it's of us. It's your lane. Exactly. You start getting in the traffic jam if you start doing it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so, right, yeah. And yeah. I know a lot of people who feel that I know a lot of people that feel that they're weak because they can't make decisions for themselves. Mm. Yep. Definitely. And that hurts me. Mm-hmm. I will never get mad at you for stating your opinion. I won't. Yeah, I'm yeah. huge on having an opinion. I'm right. I'm huge on having an opinion. I want you to know what you believe in. Mm-hmm. I don't have to believe in what you believe, but I would like <laughs> right, right, but right. I would like for you to have a stance. Yeah, it's important yeah. for you to have a stance. Whether it's right, wrong, it, it's important for you to have a stance in whatever it is you're doing, to mm-hmm. have something that you believe in. Stand on something. You know what I'm saying? That's important. Yeah. Um you know, and so that I just feel like a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people feel weak in a sense because mm. they can't. And so I'm always encouraging people to, well, whatever you want to do. Mm. Is that what you want to do? Should I do? Is that what you want to do? Mm. Should I do this? Do you want to do that? <laughs> that's, right, the, right. that's the question I give back. Yeah. Should I do this? Is that? Do you want to do that? Right. And so I find myself in situations where I ask people things and I started doing it to where I'm like, okay, let me just... Take a step back from me and let me sit by myself and figure out what it is I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then we'll talk about it. Yeah. And you can influence me or not, but I at least have a base where I stand at. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's where the the coming back to the one is. You know what I'm saying? You have to realign. Yeah. The, it, our 
are you affecting my standards of way of living? You know what I'm saying? And if it is, then you can't, you can't yeah. go that way, you know? Exactly. And that's okay. And that's where people get messed up is because they feel like they have to please everybody, mm -hmm. you know? And it shouldn't, like, we, we are creating a culture where it takes your opinion away and it takes your voice away because you have to, you know, kind of tiptoe around everything else. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like upsetting to other people for you to sit, say no and say, I'm not cool with that. So I'm going to do my thing. But I mean, I, and, you know, I say mental health and, you know, we have the community powered by self love. Mm -hmm. You know, this hoodie is our, this is our next hoodie coming out. It says, I love me. Right. I was uh, asking about it. But you said <laughs> they're not ready. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love me. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and the idea is, you you have to I have to love me before I can love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that say, "Well, I you know I love you." Well, are you taking care of your mental health? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or did you go work out? Are you drinking enough water? Did you sleep enough? Mm -hmm. Are you showing yourself enough love? Mm -hmm. How can you love me? Yeah, yeah. You don't even love yourself. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How mm -hmm. does it work? How can you love somebody else but you don't love yourself? It's real. You, that can only happen for so long. Mm -hmm. it can't, you can't genuinely continue to... Because if I love you, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to pour into you. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help you. But how can I help you if, if I'm under the weather because I couldn't help myself? Mm -hmm. Now you're not loving me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Definitely. it's kind of... It's, it's, you kind of got to... You know, and that's like I said, man, you've got to do... You got to love yourself before you can go pour and help other people... And so you are, you're the number one. You're the biggest, you're the biggest aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you it's come, real. you come first. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. You come first, man. Bro, this podcast is better be impacting some people, man. Cause <laughs> this is fire. Is, you know, I hope it is. It's when you get two minds like this in the, you yeah. know, in the same, in the same room. Yeah, man. It's bound to be like this. Right. It's Bro, I, I would. I mean, this is probably a whole nother different conversation too, about the whole self-awareness thing. And then just being aware uh, Cause I think it's something deeper, man. You know what I'm saying? Whenever it's like, if I can read and you know just feel kind of discern like what you're going through without even talking to you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then ask you a simple question and in a simple way, in a like calming, safe enough tone, and you be able to open up just by how that's presented. Mm -hmm. There's something different about how you're able to start changing uh like conversations and then yeah. communities cultures and environments and like all that cities yeah. you know what i'm saying and it's all because you're able to be tapped into a deeper you you know what i'm saying and and ta and to piggyback off that man is i grew up as a big black kid in edmond mm. let's just call it what it is big tall or big both ways. I used to be nice. fatter than this too. Excellent. So <laughs> Excellent. a big black kid in Edmond, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Predominantly white. white. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as somebody sees me, immediately in defense. Mm. More times than not. They're in defense. They're in defense. Because they see you. Intimidated, mm. scared. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and yeah. I, that's kind of the life I grew up in. And so for me... As a kid, I felt like to make it, I needed to be like this. Mm. So people didn't feel threatened by me. Got you. So I would grow up and I would be out in, you know, in, in situations as a kid. And I felt, okay, well, don't be too loud. Don't mm. talk too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And as I got older, I started being, I, I, I started learning, okay, Put a smile on, cause watch how that affects somebody's mood. Mm -hmm. When they, when you look up and somebody looks at you, say something to them. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Mm -hmm. Keep walking. Good morning. Keep walking. Mm -hmm. And immediately they're like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that just change. You know, it changes. Right, right. It right. changes things. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it changes when somebody when I if I smile at you, you probably gonna smile back mm -hmm. more times than not. Right, right, right. Could be it could be off nothing. Mm -hmm. And you'll be a you'd have to be a com, com, complete jerk for me to say good morning and for you to just keep walking. <laughs> right, right. Now, now you got some demons some you got to deal out with. There, now yeah. you got something <laughs> you need to deal with. That, that's <laughs> right. got nothing to do with me. <laughs> right, right, right. But nine times out of ten, you're gonna get a a, a pleasant mm. response. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, now if I walk up to you and you see me and I'm like this, and I keep walking, yeah, yeah. and I keep walking, you're going to be like, oh, that, that's not inviting. That just confirms the perspective that they already had. You know, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so now I'm trying to change it. I want to change it, man. I see mm. you and I want I want you to, to feel warm and to feel like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm safe. Right, right. I'm safe. That's good. You know? Yeah, definitely. And how many people like don't think about those simple things? Right. We talk about it. You, you're talking about a simple life of like not that many distractions overseas. But like what are the simple changes that you can even do to create a more simple life here? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that you can control right there is how mm. is, is, is your interaction. I can't control your response. Right, right, right. But I can control what I say to you, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's the one thing that I can control. Yeah, yeah. Brings me back to me, myself, because that's what my life is about. Yeah. Whatever you say back is between you and your God. That's mm-hmm. what you got. You got to answer for that. Mm-hmm. But me, I'm gonna carry myself in a way that I want to be portrayed. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want. When people think of Obi, that's what I want you to think of me. Yeah, yeah. I don't want you to think, man. He think he's too good. He think he's too cool. No, nah, bro. I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm just a regular person, man. Yeah. Trying to make it. Right, right, right. You know, so that's real. That's dope, man. Bro, I really do appreciate the time, man. I yeah, know yeah. you're a busy guy, and uh, you know all that. But for real, it means a lot. And for if you want to leave anybody with anything, a uh, uh, line, tagline, sentence, I don't know, something that you want to leave these people with. Um, say to this camera as well as your tags that people can follow you. Hey, um, Friday, Friday, October 28th, 2022. That's in what? Three days. Mm. We got our, uh, we got our commencement drop to a bunch of new items coming out. Make sure y'all go check that out. Yeah. Um, and that's about it, man. Practice self love. That's, that's really what I'm, that's really what we're here trying to do. Build a community of self-aware individuals and uh, keep building on that, man. I appreciate you for having us, having me on yeah, here. Yeah, man. Uh, that was huge, man. And, and you know, I enjoyed this. Enjoyed meeting you, meeting yeah. both of y'all. And, where, the, uh, where can they follow you at? Follow me. You can follow me on Instagram, O-B Omegano. It's O-B-I-E-M-E-G-A-N-O or one by one, W-O-N-B-Y, the number one, N-E. Uh, also, check us out on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. We'll be on there. One by one mental health podcast. That's dope. Bro, one more time. I yes, greatly sir. appreciate it. Yes, it means sir. a lot. Be sure to follow him on anything and everything. And stay tuned for the next uh, episode. We'll see you next time.